This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded. He took Mary home as his wife, but he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this morning. We give you thanks for first snow. We give you thanks for Christmas lights. We give you thanks for the sounds and the smells of the season. And we give you thanks for an opportunity and a time to come before you, to seek your word, to celebrate who you are, and to give back for all that you have given us. Lord, as we enter into this time of hearing what you have to say to us, I ask that either because of me or in spite of me, that you bring a message to your people. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so today's Sunday, today's sermon on our third Sunday in Advent shares two incredible stories that offer amazing opportunities for radical faith and an awesome reward offered by a loving God. As we dive into each of these stories from our scriptures this morning, I ask that you take the opportunity to put yourself in the shoes of the characters that we hear about. What would you have done? What would you have thought? How would you have responded? And how does God respond regardless? In our passage from Isaiah, we have King Ahaz of Judah in the midst of the Syro-Ephraimite War. Basically, you have the kingdom of Israel joining forces with Syria against Assyria, which is ruled by King Tiglath-Pilesar III. Now, the, um, the Israel-Syria coalition is threatening violence against Judah if King Ahaz does not choose to join forces with them. King Ahaz, on the other hand, is considering an alliance with King Tiglath of Assyria against this coalition. But in comes the prophet Isaiah to offer plan B. Through Isaiah, God promises Ahaz that if he trusts in God, Judah will be safe. But if he does not trust in God and have faith, Ahaz and Judah will surely fall. We see in Isaiah uh, 7, verse 9, it says, If you do not stand firm in your faith, you will not stand at all. So put yourself in Ahaz's shoes. You're the king. You have powerful forces surrounding your kingdom at war and now threatening your very existence. Do you, A, trust what you see with your own eyes and ears, Or B, trust that God is going to miraculously save you and your kingdom from destruction. Interesting decisions. When God noticed that Ahaz was not standing firm in his faith, he offered a promise to the line of David that a virgin would give birth to a child and the child would be named Emmanuel, God with us. So these are the promises offered. So what does Ahaz Ahaz choose? Unfortunately, he chose plan A, to trust what he saw and what he could see and what he sensed as a king, 
And if we fast forward 12 years from this time of the prophecy, uh, the Assyrians conquer the coalition and the kingdom of Judah. Basically, Ahaz chose poorly. However, God's promise, in spite of Ahaz, remains. So now we fast forward about 700 years, and we visit a town in Nazareth uh, called Nazareth. (laughs) I am tongue-tied this morning, forgive me. So we fast forward in time and we visit the town of Nazareth in Galilee. And here we meet Mary, a teenage girl, probably somewhere between the age of 13 and 15. And she's engaged to be married to Joseph of the line of David. This is a story we see in the Gospel of Matthew. An angel appears to Mary. Now you get a whole lot more of the story of Mary in the Gospel of Luke but we do have a little bit in Matthew. Um, And the angel appears to Mary and lets her know that she is favored by God and that she will give birth to a child and name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Now, if we back up for a minute, one of the first words that the angel said to her is, do not be afraid. If an angel appeared in your room and said, hello, favored one, are are you going to be able to not be afraid in that situation? So it's kind of an interesting thing that said, do not be afraid. That would be terrifying, I would think, but this is what he tells her. So keep this statement in mind as we hear the rest of the story. So here's Mary, and she is a teenager, and she is betrothed. Uh, to Joseph, and the angel comes in and says that she is favored by God, and that she is going to bear a child, and that child is going to be the child of God. And so what do we think of this? Oh my goodness, the power of a teenage girl in the midst of this situation. An angel appears to her and tells her that she's going to have a child. She hasn't even been married yet right? So she hasn't been with Joseph. This isn't even a part of it. And she's going to bear forth not just a child, but the child, the Son of God. Put yourself in her shoes for a minute. What amazing faith it must have taken for her to be able to decide, okay, I'll go ahead with this. How would you choose this? She's just been told, do not be afraid. I would think that that would be one of the most terrifying things you could possibly be told. But she listens. And she listens intently to what the angel has to say to her. She listens to everything that's being told to her. She's listening and pondering. And the angel lets her know how this will be, how the Holy Spirit will come upon her and she will conceive And bear a child. Now think about all the things that must be going through her head. What's Joseph going to think? What are my mom and dad going to think? It's a pretty tight community. What's the rest of the community going to think? And if I think carefully enough, Mary may have been pondering, if I'm caught in this, what might the community do to me? This wasn't just an invitation to have a child. This was an invitation to possibly be held accountable for stepping out of her her marriage bounds, of doing something considered by the community to be inappropriate. She could face being stoned. She could face being shunned. She could face the disappointment and the banishment from her family that might come as a result of this. Do not be afraid, Mary. (laughs) Do not be afraid. Now, if we think back to the Isaiah passage, Ahaz was, was offered the opportunity to have God be present. Emmanuel, God with us. Mary's being offered the same thing. Ahaz said, no, thank you very much. I'm going to do my own thing. And he paid the price for that. Mary thinks... And she ponders, and what does she decide? Let it be with me as you have said. Mary chose to go in a direction that elicited the most fear, but required 
the most faith. Now, in our passage from Matthew, the story continues with Joseph. Joseph finds out that Mary is pregnant, and he decides, you know what? I'm going to have to let her go quietly. You know, I don't want anything bad to happen to her, but at the same time, nothing can continue between the two of us. So I'm going to have to do something about this and just let her go quietly and try and hope that everything smooths over and that all will be well. But imagine what he must have been thinking. Imagine what he must have been feeling, finding out that the woman that he is about to get married to all of a sudden is pregnant. How would you feel? How would you respond? Do not be afraid, right? But he has a dream. And the angel appears to Joseph, and he tells Joseph about the prophecy of Isaiah that a virgin would give birth and bear a child, and that child would be named Emmanuel, God with us, and told him not to be afraid to take Mary as his wife. What would you do in that situation? How would you respond in that? Would you be able to accept that? Would you be able to listen to that and say, okay? Joseph did. He woke up from that dream, and he took Mary... And he brought Mary to be his wife. The awesome gift God offered in each situation is Emmanuel, God with us. Ahaz was offered the gift and rejected it, thinking that he knew better. Mary was offered the gift and responded with basically, bring it on, God, I got this. Joseph was offered the gift and instead of ditching Mary, took her to be his wife. In each story, each person was offered an opportunity to have radical faith in our God's radical love, in spite of the better judgment of each. It would be difficult for each of us to say what we might have done in their shoes, but I thank God for the courage of Mary and the bravery of Joseph. If not for them, our Christmas story would be very different However, because of them, we are given the gift to choose the same radical faith that they chose in a God that offers radical love for all of us. Bless you. Christmas is a time in which we have the opportunity to choose what God is offering us at faith value in order to witness the miracle and love of God at Christmas. It's radical, not normal at all. Webster's Dictionary defines radical as relating to or affecting the fundamental nature of something. In other words, not normal. Going against the normal, going against the natural, goes beyond normal, flies in the face of normal. It is completely different in other. It's radical. It takes stepping out of your comfort zone. It takes flying in the face of what scares you. Do not be afraid and choosing what you may not completely have a grasp on, what you may not be completely assured of. So what's love got to do with this on our third Sunday in Advent? The story in Isaiah shows that even in our failures and lack of faith, God continues to offer hope and salvation to all. That is radical love. In our lack of faith, in our inability to choose God and recognize that when God says, I'm going to come in and I'm going to help you, that we need to trust in that. How often has God offered that to God's people and God's people have said, yeah, not so sure. Yet regardless of that, God's love and God's promise to God's people is never taken away. It continues to be offered. As we approach Christmas, what opportunities for you to show radical faith or experience God's radical love are presenting themselves in your life, in your families? Are you willing and able to accept that God may want to use you to bear Jesus into the lives of others around you? One of my favorite books in youth ministry is a book called The God-Bearing Life, and it shares a theology of youth ministry that basically says our role, our job, is to bear Christ into the lives of other people, specifically youth. 
and that we teach them to bear Christ in the, to, into the world for others as well. Are you willing to be a God-bearer, just like, Jesus, just like Mary was willing to become the bearer of Jesus Christ? Are you willing to shine God's light even brighter than your Christmas lights at home and let other people see the love and the joy of Christ through you? Is there a situation in your life that feels hopeless, that God wishes to be made present in, to offer hope and healing for you in the midst of that? We heard many concerns today. We heard many heavy hearts today, but God desires to be a part of those situations, to come alongside of each of us. It's difficult to choose, but God wants to walk with each and every one of us in that and be hope and healing in the midst. Are we willing to say yes to Emmanuel in those situations with us? <coughs> The gift of Christmas and the stories from our scripture passages today is that by choosing faith in God, we invite, recognize, and feel the presence of God with us in all situations of our lives. I ask that each of us, my prayer and my blessing for all of us here, be surrounded by the gift of God's love today and throughout this Christmas season. And remember that God truly is with us. The courage and faith a teenage girl over 2,000 years ago made sure of that. Made sure of that. So know that Emmanuel, God is with us. Amen. And now if you could stand and join us in our